Welcome to this video manual on sampling with multigrain, firmware version 1.1. Today we'll be covering four main topics, sample loading and navigation, basic sampling, sampling settings, and advanced sampling. If you're new to multigrain, the first two sections are pretty essential. Advanced sampling and settings will be more useful to those who want to dive deeper into the module. On Multigrain, you can load one sample to each of the eight sound buttons to be fed into the granular engine. To start loading samples, press the Alt button, and you'll see that the sample folder buttons will become accessible, indicated by a fading blue color. These are the three folder locations on the microSD card that we can load samples from. As a side note, if a folder button is switched off, it means that there are no samples available in that folder. But of course, that's not the case for us here. The slash project folder accesses samples stored in the current project folder. We can listen to our samples by pressing the sound button. These will be previewed through the current sound settings, and as it's a new sound, these will be set to default. We can latch this on, and while it's latched, we can use the previous and next buttons to scroll through the samples in the folder. I like this sound, so let's stick with that. The sample's now assigned and ready to go. Let's select sound two, and we'll pick a sound from the slash waves folder. The slash waves folder contains a global pool of samples accessible from any project. I like to keep percussion samples in here. Let's select it and find something to use. While we're selecting our samples, we can continuously change the settings and the sample itself to hear how our grains are gonna sound. The slash rex folder contains all of the samples that you've recorded to Multigrain. These are accessed chronologically, starting with the latest recording first. When I select the folder, you'll see that the next LED button is switched off. That's because we're at the end of the folder, at the latest sample. Let's latch this and have a listen through. Now there are a lot of samples in this folder. To skip five at a time, we can long press the previous and next buttons. Cool, I like that sound, so let's go with that. We're going to load up one more sample for sound 4. However, instead of starting from scratch, we're going to copy sound 3 to sound 4. Hold sound 3 to copy, and press sound 4 to paste. So now when I go to browse for a sample for this sound, I don't need to go through them all again. Now we have 4, press exit to return to the home page. I'm going to quickly randomize these sounds to get something going. Hold RAND and press the sound to randomize. On Multigrain, it's possible to clear the settings for a sound pretty quickly. Let's say we want to do this for sound 1. To clear the settings, hold CLEAR and then press the sound once. The sample's still in place, but the sound's been reset to its default settings. Let's just say we want to clear the sound entirely. To do so, hold clear, press once to clear the sound settings, and press again to clear the sample. The sound is now completely empty, ready for us to go back and load in a different sample. Basic sampling is the fastest way to record samples and assign them to sounds. This sampling process is non-disruptive, meaning that the audio from the module isn't interrupted while we're sampling or assigning samples to a sound. So, let's get something recorded. The plonk is patched in and ready to go, but we can't hear it just yet. To monitor incoming audio, we need to press the through button. This will light up when active, and we can now hear the sound. The incoming audio can also be monitored through the current blur setting. When recording the audio inputs, samples are captured pre-blur and are unaffected by the state of the through button. The opposite is true when resampling, but we'll cover this later. For now, I'm just going to turn down blur, but I'll leave monitoring active. To start recording, press the big red sample button. It'll turn red to show that we're recording, and the maximum sampling time is 32 seconds. Press the button again to stop recording. We now have our sample recorded and ready for assignment. And we can tell because the sample button and empty sound buttons are now rapidly fading blue. Meanwhile, we can still play sounds from Plonk, and we can also trigger grains from the other sounds. 
At this point, we have four options for our recorded sample. To assign the sample to an empty sound, press the sound button that's fading blue. This will immediately assign the sample and save it to the Rex folder on the microSD card. To save the sample without assigning it, press the sample button. This stores the sample in the Rex folder to be accessed later. If you want to save your sample to a sound that's already occupied, you'll need to clear the existing one first. Let's clear sound one. Hold the clear button and press one twice. The sound is now empty and will fade blue. Let's assign our sample here. To discard the sample you've just recorded, hold clear and press the sample button. This deletes the sample without saving it to the micro SD card. It's also possible to capture the always listening buffer and instantly assign it to a sound. Most of the time, the sample button slowly fades blue, indicating that the always listening buffer is recording in the background. It can capture up to the last 32 seconds of audio. Whilst I've been talking here, Plonk has been silently plonking away into Multigrain for a good length of time. Through is switched off so we can't hear it, but remember, through is just for monitoring. It doesn't affect the recording from the module inputs. To capture the buffer, long press the sample button for approximately one second. The buffer can now be saved, assigned, or discarded. Let's assign it to an empty sound button. Now let's listen to what we've captured. And we can start to make grains from this. I'll randomize the sound. I'll also quickly add a quantizer by holding the quant button and then adding the notes. And then we can play with the sound some more. The sampling settings page allows you to make adjustments to your recording settings on Multigrain. To open the sampling settings, press the Alt button, then press the sample button. The sample button will blink while we're on this page. Controls relating to this page and the sample editing page, which we'll talk about in the next section, are generally labeled in blue. It's also useful to keep in mind that any knob controls in this page switch to pass through takeover, meaning the knob position has to pass through the current setting to change it. This applies to the sample editing page as well. The resampling button switches between recording the module inputs when off, or resampling the outputs when switched on. Normalize helps to keep all of your recordings at a nominal level. It can boost quieter recordings by up to 20 decibels. Normalization is applied when you save your sample, so you can decide whether or not to apply normalization after recording the sample first. Through monitoring remains consistent between the sampling settings and the home page, so as not to cause any interruptions to the audio output of the module. Gain sets the recording level. By default, this is set to unity gain in the center position. Fully clockwise will increase the gain by 2.5 times, and fully counterclockwise will reduce the gain to half. Let's put this back to Unity. Threshold sets a level at which recording is initiated. This means that when you start recording, the sample input level has to meet the threshold to start capture. You can monitor the threshold level on the sample settings page with the knob LED. If it turns red, the input source is meeting or exceeding the threshold for recording. When fully counterclockwise as it is now, threshold recording is off and the knob LED remains red no matter what the input level is. If I increase threshold with sound at the input, you'll start to see the LED flicker between blue and red, as only part of the signal will meet or exceed the threshold. Now if I turn down the level of plonk, we'll eventually get to a point where it fails to meet the threshold entirely and it will stay blue. Let's turn the level of plonk back up and set our threshold to about half. All the settings that we've mentioned on this page will be remembered by the module and will apply to both basic and advanced sampling as well as the always listening buffer. To exit the sampling settings page, press exit. To end this section, I'll show you how threshold recording works in practice. If I press the sample button, it will fade red to indicate that it's armed but not recording. When the input audio meets the threshold, Multigrain will start recording, and the sample button will turn solid red. Press the sample button again to stop recording. From here, we can now save, assign, or discard our sample as usual. 
Advanced sampling adds an editing stage to the basic sampling process. This pauses the granular engine so that we can preview, trim, save, and assign multiple samples from a longer recording. We're going to grab some sounds from Digitone here to show you how this works. Multigrain can sample directly from most Eurorack modules, but if you want to sample line-level devices or instruments, you may need something to boost the signal. In this case, we're running Digitone through the external inputs of Stereo IO 1U. So, let's turn on through and listen to Digitone. And now let's capture some samples. Now that we have our sounds recorded, long press the sample button for approximately one second, and this will bring us to the sample editing page. From here, we can access the sample editing controls plus the sampling settings mentioned in the previous section. And remember, pass through takeover applies to any knob controls. Let's start by listening to our recorded sample using the scene buttons. Press and hold scene A button to preview the entire recording from the start. Press and hold the scene B button to preview the last second of the recording. You can change the default playback behavior of the preview buttons using the direction button. When the button is on, scene A plays the first second of your recording in reverse, and scene B plays the entire recording in reverse. This is particularly helpful when identifying clicks or pops to trim from the start of the recording. When the direction button is fading, scene A plays the entire recording as a loop from the start to the end, and scene B plays it as a loop from the last second of the recording before wrapping back to the start point. This is useful for listening to how your sounds will wrap in normal operation. So, without performing any edits at all, I'm going to save the whole sample by pressing the sample button. The sample button and empty sound buttons have stopped fading blue. This indicates that we've saved a sample from the current editing state. When we make a new edit, these will light up again. Now let's split up and save the three different digitone sounds as individual samples. Using the start and end controls, we can define the start and end point of a sample that we want to save from a longer recording. The preview buttons are especially useful here. The nudge function moves the start and end points in smaller increments for more precise trimming of a sample. Scan sets the nudge direction and amount. Clockwise nudges forwards, and counterclockwise nudges backwards. The scene buttons will move the trim points incrementally each time that they're pressed. With scan in the center position, nudge is not applied and pressing a scene button will just preview the sample as mentioned before. For this particular edit, the start point was already set with the recording, so we're only nudging the end point into place using the scene B button. Let's preview the sample as a loop. I'm happy with this, so now I'll save it to an empty sound location. The trimmed version of the sample is now saved and assigned to sound one. On the editing page, sounds with samples assigned are shown with a red LED. So now using what we just learned, let's grab our second sample. Sounds good, I'll save that to sound two. Now for the last sample, this will be a little easier because I can just set the end point to the very end of the sample. And I'll move this start point along to find the beginning of it. I overshot a little, so I'll just scan back. Excellent, that's our third sample, so let's save that to sound three. So those were the three sounds that we recorded, but remember the sound that I was playing before that? I feel like I could make some good grains with that. Even though I didn't lift audio from the always listening buffer, we can still access the audio from it here in the sample editing page. All we have to do is grab the start point and move it back to before we started recording. And there is my noodling from before. 
Let's set the endpoint. Nice, so now we have a fourth sample. Instead of saving it to an empty location, let's overwrite sound three. Press the occupied sound once to select it, and it will begin to blink rapidly. Press it again to confirm the overwrite, and now our old sample has been replaced with a new one. And remember, even though the old sample has been cleared, it's still on the micro SD card if we want to access it later. Now that we have our sounds, let's make some grains. Press the exit button to return to the home page. Let's randomize these a bit. So, that's everything that you need to know about sampling on Multigrain for firmware version 1.1. Any changes that may occur with firmware updates will be covered in future videos. For more information, check out the rest of our Multigrain video manual series, or you can read the written manual, which is linked in the description below. Thanks for watching. Thank you.